Hello, I'm G. Geronimo. This is Rapper Talk. Today, we'll be speaking with Health Secretary Pauline Obial about the Duterte Administration's health agenda for 2017. Good afternoon, Secretary. Okay, uh, the unmet need for family planning. What's the executive order about and um, what's the status? Uh, it's now signed. Oh. Yes. They just uh, informed me because I, I tried to follow up yesterday and I even told the presidential management staff of the three, I want this one to be prioritized. Mm -hmm. The okay. unmet need or uh, reaching zero unmet need for family planning. Mm -hmm. And it's really implementing the, the full, uh, shall we say, coverage of all Filipinos to have access to um, the type and the commodities of um, contraception that they need to actually uh, realize the family size and the spacing of the children that they want. So it's, it's really something that would fulfill their uh, choices and their desire mm -hmm. for uh, their family size and their spacing of children. So what does the what's what does that uh, where does that come in now that we have we still have that uh, temporary restraining order by the Supreme Court on implants? Uh, it's uh, just making sure that all the uh, couples or uh, individuals that want to practice family planning mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, are are actually enjoined and are provided uh, services to do so. So there are um, in the market a number of other commodities and uh, methods of practicing family planning that are available. So it's not just the implants that we're talking about. There's a whole lot of other methods that they can use. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, earlier, you said that you want to uh, ask the president to actually, you know, maybe he can do something about the Supreme Court TRO. Could you talk about that? Um, we're asking the president to actually probably call on the Supreme Court to fast track the review and uh, maybe also encourage them to lift the TRO I if possible. Mm -hmm. Because the Commodities were already procured in 2015 and uh, uh, implants are in the warehouse of the DOH and will expire by 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, by 2018, our commodities will expire, mm -hmm. all of them? Or the, yes. the, 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 the implanon. The implanon. Yeah. But the other co contraceptives? We procured them last year, so they have a shelf life of over over three years. So that's good for even up to 2019 and oh, beyond. Okay. Yes. But their certificate, the FDA certificate, because uh, part of the Supreme Court TRO is actually to um, halt the approval of certificates. Uh, does that any... The um, most of the products that we procured have existing and valid certificates. So um, I think that would not be an issue until after 2019 because we, we give a certificate of product registration, I believe that is a five year mm -hmm. uh, product registration. So it's not every year that we issue the certificate of product mm -hmm. registration. Um, go up. Uh, just jumping right from there, how much did we get actually f as our budget for the contraceptives for this 2017? How much is our budget? Uh, we're still awaiting the final uh, document from Senate, but as of the last um, uh, information that we have is that an additional 495 million was added to the 165 million that was already in our proposal coming from Congress. Mm, okay. Uh, Ma'am, for the executive order on Firecracker, aside from the impact on businesses, you said there, um, you are considering the, the storage. Yes, the safety of the yes. community surrounding the 
the industry that uh, will store such um, uh, commodities that will not be used for the uh, holiday celebration this year. Uh, so that's more that that's your bigger concern than the impact on businesses. Actually, that's not my concern at all. Okay. But that was the concern of uh, some of the cabinet members that actually were in the discussion that uh, that might pose a bigger injury problem if it is not used. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the tobacco control executive order, President Duterte actually asked you to draft. Mm -hmm. How? How so, or when did he tell you that he, you, you should draft? When I presented the Philippine Health Agenda, that was sometime in September. After our visit to Cuba in mm -hmm. August, so we crafted the Philippine Health Agenda and presented that to the cabinet using the Cuban model as our, uh, shall we say, backbone for framing the Philippine Health Agenda. Okay. All right. Ma'am, now uh, let's go to drug rehabilitation program. Um, it's been six months since the, uh, the Duterte administration started its campaign against illegal uh, drugs. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at the start of the six months, the DOH even admitted that you two were overwhelmed mm -hmm. by, by the number of yes. drug surrenderers. And right now we already breached the one million mark. Mm -hmm. What's the status? Where are these drug surrenderers now? Have they been admitted to the drug rehab centers? Yes, uh, as of the moment, our total admissions in our drug rehab centers actually number only 10,000. So that's um, still uh, way below the projection of 1% mm -hmm. of the population that needing a residential type of okay. rehabilitation. So if we have uh, a million, that would mean that about uh, 100,000 should be in a uh, residential type of rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, uh, when we started this, the 1% is just our, shall we say, working mm -hmm. estimate. Because we, we've had very little experience on voluntary surrenderees. Mm -hmm. What we have in the program is actually uh, the drug abuse um, uh, patients or victims that were caught. Mm -hmm. So they were caught by the police or by the uh, local officials, and then they were forced to undergo, uh, shall we say, mandatory rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And there is a court order for them to undergo this rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Uh, for six months up to 12 months. Mm -hmm. So that's the scenario we came from. And we don't know actually if that 1% is actually what will happen or what we, we will need right. when we have voluntary surrenderies. Mm -hmm. So what we have now is a scenario wherein we're getting less than 1% of the surrenderies in the treatment and rehab centers. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't see any issue with regards to uh, that or shall we say even increasing criminality or even uh, uh, problems being raised by the local government units because we, we told them that our facility in Nueva Ecija is actually open mm -hmm. and that they can uh, recommend the surrenderies that will be admitted there, but so far uh, less than a hundred has been admitted in the Nueva Ecija facility that can actually house about 10,000. Uh, and this 100 uh, surrenders are from different parts of the country? Mostly Metro Manila. Uh, mostly, mostly Metro Manila. How do you pick who? The local government recommends them and then we admit them. Uh, we don't uh, even refuse anyone. So as long as they're recommended by the local government and we have trained their uh, healthcare providers to assess which ones would need residential care and which are qualified for community-based rehabilitation. So we accept them. Mm -hmm. Earlier you mentioned that there, there was actually a process uh, of you know, having a court order and everything. Were you able to shorten that process given yes. the, the necessity uh, of 
that was uh, arranged with the Dangerous Drugs Board and the uh, uh, Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency that there was, um, uh, sh shall we say, fast tracking of the process of admitting uh, surrenderers into the rehabilitation program. So they don't even need the court order anymore. As long as they are assessed by uh, a trained healthcare provider, then we admit them. But is the 10,000 um, still part of your timeline? Or do you think you're lagging behind in terms of admitting um, surrenders? We don't have a timeline. Mm -hmm. We're just waiting for the LGU to refer their surrenderers mm -hmm. to our facilities. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't have a target. We're not targeting the 10,000 to be filled up because it depends on how many are referred to us. And then the number of surrenderers are assessed on a day-to-day -day basis by people we have trained. So we really have no idea how many will be referred to us mm -hmm. because it depends on the assessment of the frontline health workers. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. What are the lessons learned on, on, the, on our program on drug rehabilitation six mm -hmm. months into the program? Well, uh, six months into the program, we believe that uh, the rehabilitation program is uh, evolving and it's a dynamic process and that we have uh, actually engaged so many stakeholders and so many different uh, sectors that have actually also ca uh, come forward and volunteered their services to help us deal with the surrenderers. And I think it's really um, a successful effort mm -hmm. because uh, we have been able to address uh, the needs of all surrenderers and that they are undergoing, most of them are undergoing community-based rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. What uh, we're just uh, worried about are those that are lost to follow up, mm -hmm. meaning that they have not uh, reported to either a community-based program or been admitted to our treatment and rehab centers. So we're looking into that of uh, how we can actually bring them back to the program, whether it's community-based or rehabilitation. Challenges, ma'am. Mm -hmm. What, what, uh, now we're going into the another year, what are the challenges for the program? Um, Especially, we don't see the campaign, the campaign against illegal drugs, um, slowing down anytime soon. Well, the uh, challenge is really to identify because the, there's been an estimate of around four million uh, drug users or uh, ne uh, that might need rehabilitation in this country. So. The, the challenge is actually to identify the remaining 3 million mm -hmm. because uh, we believe that uh, many of those who will uh, subject themselves to uh, voluntary rehabilitation have already come out. Mm -hmm. So it's the remaining 3 million that uh, we have no way of actually identifying. So that's, that's the challenge, whether we we do random drug testing or we mandate uh, a drug test for, mm -hmm. for each and every sector or high risk sectors or I don't know how we will identify the remaining 3 million that have not surrendered. Okay. Um, speaking of the 4 million, is this the number of the... The number of the Dangerous Drugs Board is about 3 million. Mm -hmm. The 4 million is being quoted by the president mm -hmm. because he says that um, there's, uh, there's uh, the 3 million is uh, about uh, three years back. Mm -hmm. So that would have increased because mm -hmm. there was no intervention in the previous administrations on uh, actually curbing the drug problem. All right. Ma'am, on the mega drug rehabilitation centers, the first one is already operating at Nueva Hesia. Uh, where are we now on the other mega drug rehabilitation centers? I've actually been involved in uh, uh, memorandum of agreement signing for 
uh, three other mega treatment and rehab centers. One in uh, Bataan, that's Luzon, so that was the projection to in Luzon. One in, <coughs> excuse me, one in Bohol, so I was there last week, and one in Davao. I, was, uh, I, I had my assistant secretary represent me in, in that uh, groundbreaking and MOA signing in Davao City. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see all of these built this year? Yes, the, the projection is that all of these three other facilities will be finished before the end of the year. And how much are their capacity? 500. Each. Each, yes. So the biggest is really the one in Nueva Hizu. Yes, that's right. Okay, all right. Ma'am, um, for our last question, what are other priority programs that the Department of Health is looking at now that we're going into 2017? And what do you want to focus on for this year? Uh, yes, uh, we're, we're focusing on actually 12 legacies of the uh, Duterte administration for the next um, six years. But uh, for this year, it's really focusing on um, the universal insurance coverage, lowering drug prices by making uh, essential drugs and uh, maintenance drugs available to uh, the poorest Filipinos. The, annual check up for the poorest Filipinos so that we can get the diseases early, early detection and therefore save the government the much needed resources of treating advanced cases. And uh, I think uh, improving the service delivery network like uh, making sure that all facilities are actually providing the care and services that they're supposed to provide, like a barangay health mm -hmm. station, the rural health unit, the district hospital, and the provincial hospital. Mm -hmm. So putting that in place so that uh, all Filipinos will have access to whatever level of care they need. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're right on track since you started in 2016 and until now? Um, we're, we're not yet... Um, uh, shall we say, at that stage where we can identify what will be uh, accomplished month per month. Mm -hmm. So I cannot say we're on track or off track because mm -hmm. we're looking at it on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. Did we accomplish what we, we did for, uh, we targeted for 2017? So I can say that we're on track by 2018 January. Mm -hmm. So we, we have not uh, identified the monthly mm -hmm. uh, target. But an assessment of the first six months, because the first six months, the president has promised mm -hmm. change in three to six months. Uh, what do you think, what are the changes that, are you, uh, that, ha that has happened in our health sector? Yes, uh, we, we have our first 200 days report mm -hmm. that uh, uh, we've, we're submitting to Malacanang. And uh, the president has given us three marching orders. And that's the first one, the war on drugs. So we've uh, pretty much accomplished the doubling of the capacities of our treatment and rehab centers. We've accomplished the training of frontline health workers so that they can assess. And we've accomplished the the manuals for the community-based rehabilitation program and algorithms. So the war on corruption, we have uh, put the systems in place in the Department of Health and even with the Office of the President, the 888 uh, hotline, and uh, uh, composed our integrity management program so that we can uh, investigate cases and uh, uh, file the necessary cases against corrupt uh, DOH officials. And we've had a revision of our process of handling complaints in the Department of Health. The third is uh, the war on poverty. Mm -hmm. So 
we've also managed to uh, attain at least 82% of our target of uh, having uh, annual checkup for the 20 million poorest Filipinos. So mm -hmm. by the end of December, we have attained 82% of that 20 million target. So we're, we're just finishing off the 18% that needs to be reached. So that's pretty where we are. And I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, we're at the passing mark of 8. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us uh, today, Secretary. We've been speaking with Health Secretary Pauline Obial about the Duterte administration's health agenda for 2017. I'm Ji Thanks for joining us.